In January 2012, news reports of scientific fraud circulated the globe. A renowned researcher with over 500 published studies and editor of numerous scientific journals stood accused by his university of 60,000 pages of allegations that he had fabricated all of his research studies dating back over four decades. The university posted a website that made all of these allegations public. The allegations were so voluminous that it was difficult not to believe this researcher was guilty as charged. Listen to Dr. Doss discuss his scientific achievements. Deepak K. Das, I'm the, until now, I'm the professor and the director of the Cardiovascular Research Center of the University of Connecticut Medical Center. My main credential is I'm a PhD in molecular biology and biotechnology, but later I got SCD or DSC, and I also have an MD honorary degree, and I am a honorary scouser from two different universities. It is the highest decoration university can give. At the University of Connecticut, I have been for 30 years approximately, and uh, I wrote at least 500 papers, peer-reviewed papers. Many of them are, are uh, reached at top 10 level, and they are cited many times, more than 100 times, and uh, about 200 book chapters and 15 books. My main research area is the molecular signaling of the heart, and that's why I'm famous. I'm mostly famous on redox signaling, which I started. I had a journal started on redox signaling, which is a very high impact factor now, and we even established a society called redox society. So, this is my expertise and, and there is no one can challenge me and no one understands this even in the health center. But I have a passion for this kind of research that whether we can use the food as medicine. This is, this is kind of my hobby. So, I take many, many uh, things you know which is of food origin and I want to see whether they can be used as medicine. But subsequently, the charges against Dr. Deepak Das, director of the Cardiovascular Research Center at the University of Connecticut Health Center, were carefully scrutinized. A charge that Dr. Das had the only keys to his office and that he solely had access to his secretive computer that held graphic images that were altered in public studies was quickly refuted. Former students indicated others had keys to his office, including the university's whistleblower, and that the office usually had an open door, not a locked door. Students who did all the laboratory bench work then had access to the main computer to enter their test data prior to publication of any studies. Another false allegation was that Dr. Doss had terminated the employment of a student whose work disagreed with Dr. Doss's published papers. Former students verify that Dr. Doss never terminated that student. She was dedicating most of her lab hours to another researcher, and he simply removed her from his budget. Then, the most egregiously false allegation was made. That all of the conclusions that Dr. Doss had drawn from research studies which demonstrates resveratrol, a red wine molecule, protects the heart from mortal heart attacks in animal experiments were false. Yet the test data in question had nothing to do with the conclusions drawn from the scientific experiments. It was only the biological mechanisms that were in question. For unexplained reasons, when these refutations were aired online, the university suddenly took its website offline. The allegations against Dr. Doss were aired by over 300 news organizations. However, the denial of any wrongdoing was only published by two news sources. The allegations of massive scientific fraud made such a good news story, news agencies weren't about to take a major university to task over the allegations. Radio talk show commentator Russ Limbaugh said, Dr. Doss, quote, made it all up, end of quote. The public was left with the false impression that decades of research showing red wine as well as the molecule resveratrol was false. 
But other researchers on other continents had independently duplicated Dr. Doss's experiments and had drawn the same conclusions. Why was there such a quick rush to judgment? Why was there a major effort by news media to slam this researcher without any investigative journal into the merits of the charges? Recognize that resveratrol works in a unique manner from any drug. Resveratrol protects before a heart attack occurs, and it was shown in an experimental animal model that it can turn a mortal heart attack into a non-mortal event. This is a biological phenomenon called cardioprotection. Aspirin and statin cholesterol lowering drugs only protect against non-mortal heart attacks. So resveratrol actually is the only agent that is under scientific investigation as a molecule that can prevent sudden cardiac death. Here Dr. Doss explain this now. I believe our group was the first one who said that resveratrol is cardioprotective. Before that, resveratrol was shown to work for cancer research. That's how Pujito found out from the University of Chicago. We are the first one who started working on resveratrol and said that it is good for heart, heart benefits and uh, healthy heart. And so we did, we did a lot of work. We did signal transduction to other works. And we are the first one who said it depends on the dose and it has hormetic effect, hormesis, so that you, one has to use very low dose of resveratrol. I mean, world before didn't believe it, but now almost everybody believes that resveratrol for the heart health works only at low dose of resveratrol. And we actually kind of found out all the pathways of resveratrol, how it works on heart. Yes, heart can withstand damaging effect more because we are the first one who also said that resveratrol can induce the autophagy and uh, by autophagy it can reduce the risk of heart attack. And we did some also human study with my former fellow who is now a professor at the University of Osaka, Otani, and who has been working with me for last maybe 30 years or so. So we all showed whether it is in the laboratory animal model or human model, resveratrol works. So whatever we said, the whole entire world actually repeated it and they kind of, uh, kind of uh, support our, our findings that indeed resveratrol works for the heart and it gives protection of the heart. Most of the resveratrol papers were cited by CNN, BBC, New York Times, Los Angeles Times, almost everywhere they were. And they were uh, Nelson's rating TV, and they were cited as the top 10 paper. Many of the papers actually during the last two, three years are top 10 papers and cited more than 100 times. But then came the sudden allegations by the university. One wonders, if there is peer review being done at the many scientific journals, did Dr. Doss's alleged falsehoods pass by their scrutiny as well? Dr. Doss was asked why the university chose to air their allegations when he was away from his desk in Connecticut and attending a scientific meeting in India. I have absolutely no idea because as far as I know that they were considering me for according to bylaws of the university for retirement. And since I was approximately age 66, so I agreed to retire and everything was written out for my retirement and everything. So he one day called for the press release and he ignored all the fact and the lawyer uh, I forgot his name, they put the things together and they all made a big press conference saying that, say, or appearing me like a devil and I did everything wrong for the last 40 years in three different universities and so that he said everything we did is wrong. 
Dr. Das goes on to explain that his computer was removed from his office and that the subsequent allegations published by the university online focused on altered Western blot images reproduced in scientific journals. While the university showed how these images were altered, it failed to mention that editors of scientific journals demand Western blot images be enhanced for the purpose of visualization when they go to print. All the allegedly false Western blot images shown at the university website and in their lengthy report were not originals. So he took all the computers and inside the computers, whatever are the conversation or not the conversation, rather the email chat with, uh, with my colleagues or my students, fellows, they put all the 30 years conversation or email chat like, for example, I'm telling you one example I'm giving, like I asked one of my students that give me a better picture. And he said, look at that. That means he's asking for manipulation. In fact, we did six or eight copies of the same, same uh, pictures or, or the sets of pictures. And PI has every right to ask for better picture or best picture so that we can publish that representative picture. So there is nothing wrong in it. So this kind of thing, conversation or email chat, they took out of uh, about six or eight computers for the last 30 years. While Dr. Das was accused of scientific fraud dating back almost 40 years, the fact is that records of this scientific studies are only stored for five years and that Dr. Das cannot access these records in his own defense. He speaks on this here. The National Institute of Heart, who funded my research, they mandates that we keep the data for the last five years. And we did keep, it is a routine for us to keep the data for five years. And most of the journals also mandates that we keep the data available for the last five years. And they went for 40 years back and and there are most of the data were available to my students or fellows who did the experiments see i have been asking for the hard disk of my own computer they took they never gave it to me and then they said that they lost it and we believe they manipulated the hard disk No, they really didn't do that. They took the published papers and just the published paper, they used the software to catch any manipulation which is not, uh, not true. So he just took the computers, he manipulated the computer, disk, he destroyed the originals and then he showed that all the data are correct using the incorrect software or the people who did it has no knowledge of what they are doing. Furthermore, the Western blot test only determines the underlying biological mechanisms and is not needed to determine whether resveratrol spares heart muscle tissue from damage during a heart attack. Even if the Western blot test results were fabricated, this would not alter the conclusions of Dr. Doss's research that resveratrol protects the rodent's heart from sudden cardiac death. The evidence for that benefit is conclusively shown in vivid photographs showing resveratrol-treated rodent hearts experience far less damage than untreated hearts. Listen to Dr. Das explain it. Western blot is, the, is the, the way to determine the protein level. It is just a blot put on the cellulose paper. It takes about half a day to one day by one person Whereas one paper takes almost like 10 people for t three years of work, up to three years of work. Western dot is a very minor part of the, of the whole work. So everybody looked at the how resveratrol worked or whether it protected the heart and everybody agrees that it does protect the heart. And there is actually there is no controversy in the signaling pathways. They made it up this, as you know that there was nothing wrong in any of our western blot. They said, 
all the western blot was done by me for last 40 years or 44 years at different university. I did not even do any because I left bench work for last 30 years almost. So, it does not matter who did it, anybody did touch western blot and where my name is it was involved and they said every western blot was wrong. Again, Dr. Das concedes that western blot images were altered but only at the demand of journal editors. Listen to him explain this in his own words. They ask us to enhance it because western blot is made on the nitrocellulose paper where the background sometimes is too dark, where the main protein band is difficult to see. So, they ask us to enhance it. Enhance means enhancing the blot so that they are clearly visible to the readers and that is what is the routine process and they generally ask us to, uh, to 300 to 400 dpi and when we make it they are generally less than 100 dpi and reviewers accept it, but the press when it goes to the press, they, the journals has a different opinion. They think the readers, it should be visible to readers, they always ask us to enhance it. We asked Dr. Das directly if he manipulated scientific data in order to gain more funding for his research. No, that is a lie totally, because I have a longest track record of the university. All my grants were mm, about 30 years old, so they were running for 30 years. I have a million dollar per year grant and the resveratrol research what they put, I never used any of the federal grant, all were my, from my consulting money or from the, uh, from the industrial money. I used and I used very little money for the resveratrol research. I established a center in my own country and uh, I put my own money to, to start the center and where we do the research there, I still am doing the research there and whatever they said, they are all false. Uh, they just made it up, right. We also asked Dr. Das whether it was true that the review committee at the university would not even consider his appeal, which included evidence in his favor. That is true. They do not want to listen to any argument and they said what they did is right. Even though the way they did it is wrong and everybody says it is wrong. NIH says it is wrong, everybody says it is wrong, but they want to stick to the fact that whatever they did is right.